the folks in Vaughan and I work with. Okay, so this is a presentation about the European Secondment Scheme. It's presented from quite a practical point of view in terms of what the application process is, what the outcomes might be, what people need to think about. It's not a comment about the scheme itself or about the policy of Brexit or any other matter, okay? So it's useful to start by saying that at the moment we know quite a bit but some factors might change depending upon whether we crash out on a no-deal Brexit or whether we actually have a negotiated exit from the European Union. So I will point out those bits as I go through where there might be differences. To begin with, I like to start by trying to set out what we're looking at here. So I tend to start with the 1971 Immigration Act. The 1971 Immigration Act is what I consider to be the foundation of our current immigration system. There were immigration acts before then, but they're mostly gone. But the 1971 Immigration Act is still the major building block of the immigration system we have. And a lot of the concepts and the rights and entitlements that the Home Secretary uses to exercise immigration control date back to this Act and are part of this Act. And what this Act did in particular was it said we have two groups of people. We have people who are not subject to immigration control and people who are subject to immigration control. If you're not subject to immigration control, the Home Secretary can't do anything about you being here. If you are a person who is subject to immigration control, then we require the consent of the Home Secretary for you to be present in the UK. So in terms of who has the right to be here, who isn't subject to immigration control, at the moment there are three groups. There are British citizens, there are some Commonwealth citizens with what's called the right of abroad. That largely dates back to when countries were um, becoming independent, when some of the citizens of those countries, when the countries became independent, they were able to claim a particular right of abroad, usually because they were married to a British citizen or something of that nature. And at present, it includes European citizens who are lawfully exercising their treaty rights in the UK. So the way it stands at the moment, that group of people don't need the permission of the Home Secretary to be present here. They can be here just by virtue of being a European citizen. So what's changing at the moment is essentially that group of people, the European citizens, are moving whole scale from people who do not need permission to be here into the category of people who are subject to immigration control and therefore need permission to be here. So it's, it's kind of migration of sorts across categories, okay? Now there are lots of different time frames that we're looking at with Brexit, so it's useful to just set some of these out. So assuming we have a negotiated withdrawal agreement, then the understanding is that there will be this transition period right up until the end of December 2020, under which free movement of Europeans continues in tandem with the new system. So people who are here already from Europe or who enter the country during that period will still have the right to do so without seeking prior permission, but they will be expected during that period to migrate over to the new system. If we get a no-deal Brexit, however, then the UK government could effectively end that transition period, that free movement period, at any point. So they could say, actually, we're just going to run it till the end of 2019, or anything like that. Hard to say if they will. Quite possibly they wouldn't, even if we did have a no-deal no Brexit, on the basis that the Home Office probably couldn't cope with it. So either way, if you're in the UK and you're relying on European rights of residence, you are going to need, during this period, to transition from your free movement rights into essentially the British immigration scheme and become someone who is subject to immigration control and therefore has to have the consent of the Home Secretary to be here. So 
So, they've already piloted the EU settlement scheme with very small numbers of groups. So between August and December, they piloted it on a very limited basis by selecting a few organisations who ran the scheme with a small group of people. They then tweaked it slightly, and at this time, the pilot scheme is open, which means that anyone who has a biometric document, a biometric passport or a biometric national identity card, can go through the pilot scheme at this moment if they want to, and that will be open until the end of March this year. On the 30th of March, the actual full European settlement scheme opens properly. And again, assuming we have the negotiated withdrawal, then from that date, right up until the 30th of June 2021, you have the opportunity to register on this scheme. People can still come and go right up until the end of December 2020, and then have that kind of six month grace period to get themselves registered on the scheme. If we have no deal Brexit, then the deadline of applying is likely to be the 31st of December 2020, so it cuts out that six month grace period. When that happens, when that transition period has ended, then if you are a European, then you will become a person under UK immigration rules and you will have to comply with immigration rules if you want to stay in the UK or if you want to come to the UK. Again, we have a slight difficulty with the withdrawal agreement because if we do get a negotiated withdrawal, then even after the settlement scheme has ended, there will be the opportunity for some family members to join settled EU citizens who are already here if the relationship with that EU citizen existed prior to 20th of March 2019. So if you are here now and you're married to someone who's back in France or wherever it is, they could still potentially come and join you during that time period. Even if the scheme does close um, in December 2020, it's going to need to be open another five years after that in order to get everyone through to settled status, and I'll explain that in a moment. But it means that the scheme in some form will be running up until 2025, and I'll explain why that is. Who needs to apply? All EU citizens who do not currently hold either British citizenship or indefinite leave to remain must apply. All EU family members, and that includes spouse, civil partner, durable partner, children under 21, dependent children over 21, other dependent relatives, dependent parents, they all need to apply. When it first sets up, it's only going to be EU citizens, but it will eventually extend to European Economic Area citizens as well. So Iceland, Norway, Liechtenstein, their citizens will have to apply slightly further down the line. People do need to check what status they have. There's often a common misconception that if a child is born here, that makes them British. It's not necessarily the case. So children who are born here to EU parents they will have to get further advice on whether they're counted as British citizens or not. Is, is it when the British parents have <coughs> the right to residence? A confirm. If you are born in the UK to a parent who is either British or has no limit on their stay here, then you are British by and large. Mm -hmm. So that means if the parent has acquired permanent residency at the time the child was born, mm -hmm. then the child is British. No, they, that's, doesn't matter if they have the documents or not. It does not matter. Mm -hmm. The right of permanent residence exists in EU law regardless of whether the Home Office has stamped it in your passport. So as long as you can prove mm -hmm. that you have exercised treaty rights for five years and therefore would have had permanent residence at the time of the birth of your child, you have permanent residence regardless of whether you apply to the Home Office for recognition of that right. There, have been, there, there has been some news about the Home Office doing the best they can to enforce that. Yes. Uh, with the Works Registration Scheme? Yes. Which finished over five years ago? Yes. Uh, the 
were some interesting developments with the workers' registration scheme. Because the workers' registration scheme was in operation for three years, and then it's extended for two years. There was a court case which eventually decided that that two years extension was illegal. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have happened. So while people may have to prove that they were registered on the workers' registration scheme for those first three years, they shouldn't have to prove it beyond that. So again, people may need to put those bonds. Yeah, it was extended after 23rd. Yeah, it was extended. It wasn't allowed. It shouldn't have been extended after 23rd. It was 2004, so it would have been uh, 2007. 2004, 2007. So after 2007, it, wouldn't, it shouldn't have been extended. Um, I still had to apply in 2010 and 2011. Yeah, but it shouldn't have been, so it's retrospectively said. That said, yeah. even if somebody lived, has lived here since, say, 2010 yeah. till now, yeah. they have had their five years. The five years have yeah. happened. It shouldn't matter. No. So what should happen when you apply for this registration scheme, the secondary scheme? If you've been in the UK for five years, then you should get settlement, which is essentially indefinite leave to remain in the UK. Now the interesting thing about this is it's just actual physical presence in the UK for five years. It does not talk about exercising your treaty rights, which is what we would normally talk about if you were here, because you just have to be here. In order to apply, you need proof of your identity and nationality, which would usually be the same thing, a passport or a national identity card, and you need proof of five years' residence. But the default position is that the Home Office will automatically check your tax records and your benefits records to see if they can find that you've been here for five years. So if you've been working for five years, it should be really easy, you should be able to register your passport, they check your records, yes, you've been working five years, you're settled, okay? Or you can supply your own evidence. Um, if you think, well, yes, I have been here five years, but I've not necessarily been working, I've been doing this, I've been doing the other, you can supply your own evidence to show five years residence. If you have existing permanent residence, then that should just be changed straight over into settlement. You shouldn't have to have further checks done on that. There is a condition that you have no substantial criminal record. We have been talking to you about what does substantial criminal record mean, and it seems that there, it is a higher bar than um, in the application for citizenship. So, for example, if you're applying for British citizenship, having any unspent conviction on your record, having points on your driving license, all of those would bar you from getting citizenship. That standard is not being applied in this scheme. In this scheme, we're essentially saying, if you've committed a crime so bad that you would possibly be looking at deportation, which in European terms usually means you have a sentence of imprisonment of two years or more, or you are someone who is habitually criminal, then they may consider not granting you settlement is a much higher bar than most immigration applications. Okay. And if you are a non-EU family member of an EU citizen, in addition to this, you also have to prove that relationship with an EU family member. So in terms of providing documentation, do you have to send them the original copy before they come up with applying for permanent residency? Do you have to post it? In terms of passports, the app that they have got, if you've got a biometric passport, it doesn't need you to send your passport. The app recognises your biometric passport and just automatically... What about a permanent residence card? Uh, permanent oh, residence yes. card? I don't know if those are biometric, but are probably not. So, But what they're saying at the moment is the documents are scanned and uploaded rather than being physically sent. So in that term, it should be just possible to scan and upload things rather than actually have to send them away. If you can't evidence five years in the UK, um, then what you're given in the state is so what's called pre-settled status. So you still apply, you still go through the app, but they say, okay, we don't think you've got five years residence, we're going to give you pre-settled status instead. 
then you're supposed to apply once you've accrued five years of residence in order to change that to settle. So that's what happened in there. And again, for that, all you need is a evidence of identity and nationality and that you are physically here right now. That's all you potentially need for that. The good news is that there's no fee because the government announced, or Theresa May herself announced, that that would not apply. At the moment, if you're going to the pilot scheme, you still have to pay the fee because the pilot scheme was already running when she announced that the fee was being scrapped and they couldn't make the changes. So they're saying if that happens, you'll have to pay the fee and they will reimburse you. But the current situation is that once the scheme operates in full, it is free. So that is a good thing. So what's the application process? Well, the application process, they're trying to make it all digital. This is the idea that it's a digital application rather than a paper-based application. So you make the application online through an app, which can only be downloaded onto Android devices, so an Android phone or tablet, and apparently not all Android devices. I think some of the older ones don't support it, so people may need to make sure of that. Documents are scanned and uploaded, as I say, rather than being sent in person. And you get your decision to grant you settled or pre-settled status quite quickly. If they say, well, we checked your records, we think you qualify for pre-settled, and you say, no, I think I should be settled, then you have further opportunity to scan and upload documents to evidence that, so you have that opportunity. The, the thing which I found quite weird about this is you don't receive the physical document. You're, you receive digital status only. So your status is kind of held on a government website. The closest I can come to it is it's a bit like a universal credit account, where you apply for benefits to universal credit and you have an online account and everything's there, rather than having anything physical. So you have your digital document, you can access it by entering your details and your password, and then it shows, yes, you have this status. If you're a non-EU family member, you will get the biometric residence permit as well as your digital status. I have a biometric residence permit myself, but I've done this suspiciously before the digital status thing, but maybe that's just me. Should, should, should um, you become a non-EU citizen first? <laughs> it's the yeah, I think I should do, I don't know. Yeah, I think about it. Um, and all applicants must have a valid email address because most of the, the, the responses to your application go to an email, so you need to have an email address in order to apply. So when you watch this now, what can you do? So, I mean, our concerns have been, we're an organisation that works with a lot of vulnerable people, so we were looking at the people that we've been working with, saying, well, digital exclusion, lots of people that have access to IT, particularly some older people aren't particularly IT literate, or people just don't, aren't able to do those. People may have evidential problems, evidencing that they've been here for five years. If you've been at home looking after children for five years, you might not necessarily have all those documents. Some people lose their ID documents, and again, you've then got the cost of replacing their passport before you can apply, so you've got that issue. Some people have them lost by the home office. Some people have them lost by the home office, which is very good at doing that. 